Hello, 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 my beloved listeners. I am so thrilled to be spending this time together. And of course, you know me, I'm Catherine LaRange, the host of My Dead Dragon podcast. And I just want to thank you for tuning in and choosing to spend some of your time with me. I, I hope you know that it really does mean a lot to me. And I am really excited to be speaking with my guest today, Marty Winder Adams, who is a divorce transition coach, mediator, and executive and leadership coach. And Marty has provided thousands of hours of divorce coaching leadership and executive coaching, mediation and co-parenting facilitation and education. Her focus is on helping women achieve their personal and professional goals at a challenging time in life. And when we were chatting in the pre-show, Marty's down in Texas right now, but she actually used to live just down the, just down the road from me. So howdy neighbor, welcome Marty. <laughs> so glad you're here. Thank you, Catherine. It's so wonderful to be here. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if you could start us out by sharing a bit of your story and how you came to realize that you had the choice to become the main character of your own life and heroine of your own story. Well, I have to say I was very lucky that my father was uh, one, of the, one of the people who believed that everybody, men and women, should be able to do for themselves. So mm. that was something that, you know, I was brought up on a farm. We mm. were very involved. My dad took me, you know, helped me. We worked on the tractor together. We did, you know, we worked with the animals together. So I grew up with the understanding that um, I was a central character in my story and that I really had the strength mm. and the skills and the talents to be able to stand up for myself and do things. So that was something I carried with me all through my life. And it stood me really well, I think until I went through my divorce. And I think at mm. that point, um, that's where things kind of changed in my life. Mm. So can you share a bit more about that? Like what changed for you in that process? I think I lost myself a little bit. Mm. And I know that, I mean, uh, Again, I, I chose to go through the divorce. I, I filed for divorce. It was my decision. But I didn't realize the emotional toll that divorce takes on you, um, mm. how you second guess yourself, how you become. Mm. I guess I felt guilty, to be honest. Mm. I felt guilty that the marriage didn't work. We didn't have children, so that wasn't an issue. But that, you know, that I wasn't successful, that there was something wrong with me, in quotes, mm. I guess I'm putting air quotes. Yeah. Um, that I just really felt like there wasn't something right. And at that time, I was in a job where I had a lot of responsibilities. I was um, working for a school district in a consultant's role. I was doing a lot of things. And I thought my professional life was kind of just ticking right along. And it was completely independent of what I was experiencing in my personal life. Mm. And then I realized, no, it's not. I'm starting to have, you know, I think I put on a good face. But yeah. I had a lot of friends who were able to say to me, hey, you know, mm. you need to take some time and just just work through this. So mm. I lost a little bit of that sense of myself as um, the director of my own life. And I yeah. kind of went into this poor me mode yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. while. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I relied on the advice of an attorney who was a great attorney. Um, no problem with that. But. I didn't get the divorce that I wanted. I didn't feel mm. good about it. Um, it ramped up from something that should have been a fairly normal experience to something that got a little out of control at points. Mm. And I feel that if I had been stronger and stood my ground mm. and said to the attorney, who was just doing his job, by the way, yeah. like I said, he, he did a great job. Um, if I'd have said, no, I don't want to, I realize I have that option, but this is what I really need. And if I'd have stood mm. up a little more, I could have avoided a lot of challenges in my life. So um, that prompted me to really get interested into how, how to support other women that might be going through the same experience. That is so interesting, Marty. And I, I love that you're bringing this aspect to it where growing up realizing I am the main character, I'm a strong woman. And then coming through this, this process, your marriage and, and subsequent divorce, realizing that you'd lost yourself a little bit had you been losing yourself during the marriage 
and that's what kind of part of what contributed to the divorce or was it that you were kind of feeling really strong and centered all along and then it was the divorce itself I was, you know that's a really good question i think that um our marriage was relatively short it was about five years i mm. think the first three years of the marriage i felt really strong things mm -hmm. were very very good and then um things started to deteriorate in this in about the third year mm. and i think that that's when i started to change like i started to mm. allow things to happen um that i wouldn't have normally allowed and it wasn't anything uh, like illegal or untoward yeah, or yeah but it was little things that i started to just accept as mm. rather than putting myself forward i would kind of or putting myself first i would kind yeah. of tiptoe on eggshells i would walk around subjects um mm. i got more conflict really conflict avoidant like to the mm. point of just acquiescing like yeah let's just do that without even feeling mm. confident in expressing my own opinion and like i say i thought that nobody else recognized this i thought that i was still the exact same person yeah. in my professional role uh, but i wasn't and thankfully like i said i had friends who, you know, were comfortable enough to come to me and say, Hey, what is going on in your life? Because you are not the same person you were before. Um, but the real challenge came, I think ab about six months before I decided to go through with filing for divorce. I think that was, I started second guessing myself. I lost all confidence. Even though I had, I had a great job. I started worrying about how am I going to do this on my own? And you know, I have been doing it on my own before I got married. It was only a brief period of time in my life, but I don't know what happened. I really don't know why I uh, just went into that um, almost hibernation mode where I, I yeah. just, I just wanted to pretend nothing was wrong, nothing was bad, and just deal with um, deal with things I could handle and just ignore anything else. So hmm. uh, I guess. That's a long answer to your question, but I guess it started in the, in the, in the marriage, but then it really hit home, um, mm -hmm. during the divorce. I think that's such a powerful point or story or example that, you, you know, and I think that this is something that can happen for a lot of women where maybe we've been raised to be really strong and we're fully confident or, or maybe we've been a little bit, um, not fully confident but we find that confidence and then when those really tiny like micro things happen they're so small that it seems like it's not a big deal and yet it's this like very subtle erosion of that confidence just very very subtle like a millimeter and then the next time it's just another very subtle thing and i think we you know in the moment it can feel like it's no big deal or we can maybe even feel like we're overreacting to it. But then when we have some time pass, we actually see that it's turned into a landslide. That's, you know, that whole slippery slope, slippery slope analogy mm -hmm. that people say, you know, you don't realize you're, you're, you think you're doing what's right at the time. And I think for me, my confidence was really shaken because I thought I was a really good judge of people. And I felt that through that experience, I wasn't, I, I was constantly second guessing. Um, am I, am, is this right? Is this decision right? right? Am I, am I doing this right? And that was something mm. that I had not experienced a lot in the past. So, wow. um, but I have to say it was not a bad thing because I, it forced me to take a look at some of those deeper things and start mm. to say, you know, maybe in the past, I should have reached out and said to people, what are your thoughts on this? Or, mm -hmm. you know, rather than seeing myself as sort of being the final arbiter of everything and just going, yes, no, yes, no, I, I should have reached out to more people. So mm -hmm. that was, that was something positive that came yeah. out of it. So. Yeah. I, I believe there's always something positive for us in any experience we have, even our most challenging ones. And so, so in in those kind of micro moments, they turn into a bit of a landslide. You came to a point where you recognized, okay, this does not work. I need to file for divorce. 
I'm, I'm, and you didn't say this, but I'm guessing I'm afraid I'm not in, you know, there's the, the kind of second guessing yourself going on. What happened? How did you get to that point where you were able to make that decision that this is the next step for me? I think it was those micro issues all of a sudden became macro issues mm. <laughs> where, um, you know, there was a few events that happened and, and not to go into the details because they're not really yeah. relevant, but that, that there was these big glaring issues that started to happen. And I mm. think part of that was my, my inner sense of not being true to myself. Like I started mm. to recognize that I was just giving in on everything that I was allowing myself to be okay with things that I would not have been okay with in the past. Mm. And I think it was my friends coming to me and saying, Hey, mm. this is really changing you. Um, mm. And my professional career was very important to me. And when I started to realize that what I think I'm doing exactly the same, and then I'm managing to cover this all up is, is it's bleeding through into my professional mm. career. I'm, I'm, you know, less tolerant of other people. I'm, more um, distant with people. Mm -hmm. I'm not making those connections. I'm not, uh, I'm not interacting. I'm not collaborating with my colleagues as much as before. That I think was one of the big triggers when I realized mm -hmm. that this is not an isolated situation mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a ripple effect when you're dealing with a challenge in one part of your life that yeah. that ripples into all parts of your life. And that really spurred me into what is the pinpoint issue here and what do I need to do? And it took me a good three or four months to really be able to say, um, yes, I want this divorce. I know that wasn't my partner's choice. I think there was, you know, there was a, a interest for him to continue to work on the relationship, but I had just, I just could not go any further myself. So just mm. gaining that sense of confidence again, and again, mm. some support from some friends, some family yeah. members, saying, um, we've got your back on this, we're here to support mm. you. That really helped. And that was not something I would have necessarily reached out for if they hadn't, um, you know, volunteered that, that affirmation that they were going to be there for me. And, and knowing that I had people that had my back, mm. I was more confident in taking the step and moving forward. Yeah. And having those people to hold the confidence for us when maybe we forget it for ourselves. Yeah. So there's just so much here. <laughs> there's so much here. And, you know, I think one of the things that's kind of coming up for me is that for, for, I think for many of us, we can have a tendency to, or a pattern where maybe there have been some of those micro things happening in our life, a subtle, 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 until it's all of a sudden right in our face. And then when it gets in our face and we really, really see it, there can sometimes be a pattern or tendency to blame ourselves, judge ourselves, shame ourselves. Why didn't I see this? How did I let it get this far? <sighs> and so if anybody's kind of feeling that way, who's listening, just breathe into the knowing that or the possibility that maybe this is exactly what you needed to experience to get to this point of realization. And what I know for sure is that life whispers to us, and when we don't hear the whispers, it turns up the volume. So those subtle things are the whispers. And then that kind of in your face is, or that landslide is the volume getting turned up. And so part of the journey of really becoming your own heroine and main character is to start to tune into the whispers of, of knowing. And so Marty, how do you tune into those whispers in your own life? I have started, and I came to this very late in life. I've got to admit this. Um, I started doing meditation and mindfulness mm -hmm. activities before they were a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it wasn't anything really elaborate. I didn't take any special training or courses or anything like that. But I just, and for me, it's being outside in nature. I don't know if it's because mm -hmm. that's what we did when I grew up. That was, mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah. were, we were a very outdoors family. But I just really found that finding something that grounds me, that brings mm -hmm. me joy and happiness that I can do on a daily basis, 
um, and being really mindful about that activity. And if you'd asked me this 20 years ago, I would not have used the word mindful. I'd have probably yeah. said focused or something like that. But, mm. you know, just even going like, today, like I do a daily walk, I always go outside and, and walk and I, I don't tend to listen to anything. Sometimes I do, but a lot of times I'll just enjoy being out there in nature mm -hmm. and really asking myself, what is it that I need? What is sitting well with me today? Where am I in a good place today? Mm -hmm. And what's something that, that is kind of giving me that underlying, I like the term you use, the whispers, mm -hmm. um, or that, you know, that little prickling of, I need to do something about this because it's, it's mm -hmm. just not balancing with me. So I find doing things like that are really helpful. So I do a little check-in in the morning. I do a little check-in in the evening and it's, mm -hmm. it's not anything formal or, um, but just kind of knowing that when I go to bed, there's not something sitting there that I'm thinking I really blew that or I shouldn't have done that that way. Or um, if I find something, I, I notice that there's a problem and I'm not addressing it. Uh, I, I want to know why am I not addressing it and just mm -hmm. really being comfortable in saying, why am I avoiding this? Or why mm -hmm. am I procrastinating? What is making me put this off when I need to get it done? Sometimes it takes a while to get those answers, but yeah. I think just being open and honest with yourself and being okay with saying, yep, I've got some bad habits I need to deal with, mm -hmm. but I'm going to deal with them as they come up rather than trying to be that all seeing, all knowing, mm -hmm. all correct being, um, mm -hmm. just acknowledging that those things are going to happen in life. Yeah. And I think that all knowing, all seeing being is kind of a fallacy. I don't, I don't think that, you know, certainly on this plane of existence, I don't think that that necessarily exists um, very often. And so when you're working with women who are navigating divorce and maybe they have some of that shame or blame or they've lost their confidence, what would you say to them? My goal in working with women as, as a divorce coach is to help them from where they are to where they want to go. So starting out by saying, what do you, who do you want to be when you get through this process? And it's really mm -hmm. a transition in life. A lot of people mm -hmm. see divorce as an end. It's not an end. It's a pivot at the best. Mm -hmm. So, or transition, whichever word you like to use, where, where do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? What are you enjoying? What's your passions? What have you let go of? Like all of that, really getting a clear picture of who I want to be mm. in six months, a year, five years, what, whatever time frame. And then starting to say, what are some little practices? What are those micro steps that you can take mm. to get you from point A to point B or where, you know, yeah. what your goal is down the road? I believe that you can't go from zero to 60. I don't think mm. we can go from having challenges to no challenges. That's just not realistic. Mm -hmm. So how can you address these things? What behaviors, what routines, what support, what resources, building a network so that, um, you know, that, that old analogy of the roadmap. If you don't know what direction you're going, how do you know when you get there? If you don't know where the end point is. So where yeah. do you want to go? What are the little milestones you're going to look for along the way? And then what do you need to do to get there? And really helping them to, to plot that out. Because mm -hmm. it's so easy to get focused on the negotiation part of the divorce, the legal mm -hmm. side of the divorce. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest part to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's the emotional side on the, on, on the back side. Um, that's the challenge. And, and how mm. do we, like you say, how do we let go of that sense of blame or shame or guilt or sometimes embarrassment? Sometimes, yeah. um, you know, people, their family doesn't believe in divorce or their church community doesn't believe in divorce or they don't believe in divorce and now they're going through one. So how do you overcome that? And it's really talking yourself through that, identifying that, and being comfortable in spending time exploring that for yourself and then looking at, okay, this is reality. This is what's happening. 
Now what do I do? So it's filling mm -hmm. in all those little pieces. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell women, I want you to walk out of this and I want you to look back and say, this wasn't the best experience in my life, but I'm really proud of the way I handled it and the, way, the decisions that I made at this really difficult time. So mm -hmm. that's my goal is to set people up to have the best information, the best understanding of themselves and their strengths when they make those decisions so that, you know, 20 years from now, they're going to look back and say, I did the right thing then. And yeah. given the information I had at that time, I did the right yeah. thing. Yeah. And to have that sense of peace with it. And what I love about that, Marty, is the really, and this fully aligns with the work that I do is what's that vision of the woman that you are becoming? Who are you going to be post-divorce? And I think when we are navigating difficult challenges and we're focused on the challenge and the specific outcome, like the, the legal bits or, you know, the, the logistical bits of the divorce, when we're focused on that, that becomes our end point and we don't actually have anything to move us through it. But when we're focused on or creating that image of who am I becoming, who am I going to emerge as, then we're starting to build that along the way. And the in this example, the divorce or whatever the challenges that you're experiencing just becomes one of the steps along the way. It's not the end point. Yes. And, and I think, and just to kind of, to dovetail in with that, is a lot of times women choose to make other changes at this time as well. It's kind of a mm. clean house uh, yeah. for, for lack of a better word, but maybe they want a career change at the same time. Maybe they want to mm. um, go from the corporate world to entrepreneurship. Maybe they want to go back to school. Um, you know, so if you don't, and I always say this to people, if you don't know where, where you're going to be in, in at the end of the divorce, how do you know what the best decisions are for you now? Yeah. Because if you are in a corporate career and you want to become an entrepreneur, there may be some financial considerations that would be mm. beneficial for you in the divorce mm. based on that change. So it's really important to have that end point in place because that can in, even impact, like you say, the logistical stuff of the divorce. Um, and understanding that so that you make those right decisions so that when you are done with the divorce and you've moved on, transitioned into your new life, you are set up in a place with the financial needs, with the structure, with, you know, whatever it may be that you need, that you mm. just feel like I'm good to go. I'm ready. Mm. I'm, you know, onto, onto this part of this new phase in my life. Um, yeah, yeah, because so many women don't, you're right. They look, and not just women, men do it too. Mm. Everybody mm. does it. You're just looking to that divorce decree, getting the paper and being able to go, you know, woohoo, I'm divorced. But that, or yeah. some people aren't happy, but, um, yeah. you know, to be able to say, okay, the divorce is over, but that's, it's not, that's not the end. Your life is mm. still going on. So how do you, how do you, like mm. you say, how do you make that part of the transition? Hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And so if you could give a message to yourself you know, through that experience and that journey, what would that be? I think it would be, you always, you, you are who you want to be. You mm. are the creator of your own sense of strength and sense of um, confidence, self-worth, self-love, self-care, all those terms. You own that. And you can't give that to somebody else. You can't give it to your attorney. You can't give it to your ex. You can't give it to mm. your new partner. You can't, it, that's got to be in you. And um, even though divorce is difficult, it doesn't mean that you can't build on those strengths. And like you say, use it as a uh, way to grow in your life, in yourself. And how that, how that experience is going to change you can really help how you serve others, how you work with people, how you have more healthy and effective relationships in the future. So mm -hmm. not to look at it as, as a, as a negative, but, but to look at it as an opportunity for growth yeah. and to just, just be kind to yourself. You, you've got this, you can do this going forward. Mm, we can do hard things. We can. Yeah, we can. <laughs> and so Marty, for people who would love to connect with you, how can they do that? The best way to connect with me is through my website. It is www.divorcecoach4women, and the four is the number four. 
Okay. Uh, there is a, I offer a free divorce strategy planning session. It's about 45 minutes, no sales, just about you. If you're having a particular issue or you're having a sticking point, I'd be happy to talk with you. And there's also uh, a couple of um, handy um, guides, checklists, things that, and I rotate mm. them through on the website. So you're more than welcome to grab a copy of those, how to hire an attorney, what to look for um, during your divorce, things to strategize about. So um, that's probably the best way to get hold okay. of me. And um, I'm just, like I say, I'm, I just encourage women to really understand that they have the ability to take control of their lives and their divorce mm -hmm. and uh, move forward that, through this feeling really good about themselves. Mm. And so for my listeners, as always, that link will be in the show notes. And now, Marty, you work with women in Canada and the U.S.? Yes. Yes, I do. And okay. I think it's uh, one thing I do want to throw out here because uh, there's a few divorce coaching sites that are a little misleading about this. Divorce coaches do not replace attorneys. Um, mm -hmm. I always recommend that people have an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my role is strictly to to work with you on your on your personal growth and development and support you throughout the process. Uh, you do need that legal side. But yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you so, so much, Marty. I've really enjoyed this conversation and I think there's so much here for anyone navigating any kind of challenge, right? And in this kind of instance, it's, it's a divorce that you really support women to, to walk through with, with grace, with courage, with compassion. But what you've shared, I think applies to any of the challenges, challenges that we'll face in our life. And so any last things that you would love to say or anything needing to be said to feel complete? My, I, I just happen to think that this is, this happens to be my company motto kind of by the way, but I really think it applies to everything. Like you said, it's, it's just be your success. You are the author of your success. So you have it in you and there are people that are going to support you reach out and get that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure connecting and hearing your story and, and, and really uh, kind of diving into that process that you take people through. And to my listeners, know that I love you. You are amazing. You can navigate whatever life brings you and you can do so in a way that you feel good about. And as always, thank you for supporting the show and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.